Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. <clears throat> Gary Farley. Here. Amber Brown. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. William Harper. Here. Renee Curtis. Here. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. We have two items tonight, and we'll move through those as quickly as possible. The first thing we'll do is ask those who uh, have a request before us to come to the podium, give us your name and any general information you'd like to share about your request. Following that, and a, uh, we will uh, have a public hearing, which will give every person that would like to speak on each item to come forward to the podium and also give us your name and any information you might have. We ask that you try to keep your comments within the three minute requirement. Um, I know some of you would like to speak on and on and on. Sometimes I like to do that myself, but we have to contain that. Uh, we have reviewed the requests that we have, so we're pretty familiar with the operation of each one of these items. So don't feel like we don't know a whole lot of what's going on here tonight. Uh, the first item is a request by James Lewis, who is requesting a special exemption approval of a major home business. And this is firewood pro processing. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2021 is a request for special exception um, to establish a major home-based business in the RM district. The business involves firewood and it's located at 131 Millstone Court. It's a 1.2 acre property. And this uh, application is a result of uh, uh, code enforcement complaints. Uh, the applicant actually was brought in, in in late 2018, early 2019, to apply for a minor home-based business. Uh, we were addressing some complaints that we had received um, at that time. and. Mr. Lewis indicated to us that he would be able to meet the conditions for minor home based businesses, which is a use by right uh, subject to conditions. And uh, several months went by and then we started receiving uh, phone calls regarding the noise, the uh, debris or mud that's tracked onto the streets. Um, the appearance of the property had declined and um, uh, code enforcement contacted the applicant. It was determined that he would no longer qualify as a minor home-based business, that he would need to apply for a major home-based business and come before the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. So the applicant um, stores wood on the property. However, most of his clients um, has uh, firewood delivered to their homes. Uh, Mr. Lewis indicates that there will be one additional non-resident employee. He also indicates in his application that business hours commence around 8 to 9 a.m. and end most of the time by 6 p.m. or dark. He is not proposing any signage and firewood is stored under carport um, as well as outside and he has multiple trailers located on the property. And so this is a photo of the existing home and we posted a sign on the property. We have received an email in the opposition of the request as well as multiple phone calls in the opposition to this request. We did receive one informational call. They did not indicate opposition or being in favor of the request. This is the surrounding area, the home sites. And this is a photo of the backyard. You can see uh, the wood piles. Uh, and a large area of the firewood, a large stack of firewood. And he's, he has proposed or offered uh, to place some privacy fencing that would kind of obstruct the view fr from adjacent property owners. Um, he does have a screening in the back which consists of bamboo. 
And so, um, as you can see, it's probably difficult to tell there is uh, trash or mud being dragged onto the highways by his trucks. And you can see how he's cutting across the front of his yard. Um, more photos to illustrate that. And then I think I have these two photos are from the code enforcement inspection. That's the inspection that determined that he's in violation of the minor home based business regulations. So you can see the large trees being stored here and all of the uh, firewood and vegetation. So the applicant has indicated that most of the storage would take place in the back of the property. Uh, you can see the multiple trailers that exist on the property that is used for the business. And he may indicate one's for personal, but uh, most of these are for the business. And um, I understand that there is some storage of firewood under the carports. And we found that he met some of the criteria, but not all of the criteria. We have highlighted um, the, the in number two on page two of four of the staff report in bold um, text the, the the conditions for home based business and it's applicable to both minor and major that he does not meet and that concludes our presentation do we have anyone here representing this request to come around please My name's James Lewis. I'm the one that lives there, do the firewood. I've been doing it there for several years now. The uh, only complaint on the street that I know of is one guy. Uh, he, me and him, has had several run-ins over the past. Uh, at first, he started out saying it was noise. There was no noise. They came out, did a sound study. Uh, Danielle said that she never authorized a sound study. They actually, somebody came out with the county and did one. I don't know who it was. They, it was a girl and a guy in a truck. And uh, they didn't tell me nothing. They just said they was doing a study and wanted us to continue working as we were. And they parked in the neighbor's driveway. The only house that's within, didn't you tell me 100 feet? No, I don't think I Well, somebody any kind up of there told me that within 100 feet was the people that could actually bring up a complaint. Uh, there's only two houses within 100 feet of me and probably only two houses within almost 100 yards of me. Uh, from tell my us, backyard. Tell us, tell us about your uh, processing, what, what all takes okay, place. Okay, a lot of the wood I bring in, we go and pick up, already cut up, and we bring it in and split it. And then I deliver it to customers. And uh, some of the wood we bring in is logs. And that, at that time when that picture was made, I had a tree service they was cutting some trees down not far from me and he asked if I wanted, or I asked him if I could have that wood. And uh, he said yes, so he brought it and gave it to me. That's why I had so much at one time. As far as the trailers go, I've only got one trailer that, or two trailers I use for business. And I've got two other trailers, and one of them is broken right now. And I've got two other trailers that's like six foot by 10 foot that I've been going to repair. And uh, one of them belongs to my brother and one somebody else. And I was going to do some welding on them, but I never got, I hadn't got around to it yet. But what um, you do then is you go out and you get wood mm -hmm. from various places. Mm -hmm. You bring it to your property. Mm -hmm. you, you use a saw, you cut it up. Yeah. And then you use a splitter and you split it. Mm -hmm. And how do you sell it? Do you uh, advertise it or? I, yes, I advertise it on uh, Craigslist and uh, sometimes on Facebook. And you deliver or do people come and pick it up? I deliver probably 99.9% .9 of it. 
Uh, I probably in the last year I might have had five or six people total come and pick up wood, but for the most part I deliver all of the wood because really probably 70% of the wood I sell is out of town is more in Brentwood and the Franklin. The largest part of your business is in the winter time. What do you do in the summertime? Do you still process wood? Yes, uh, we cut wood because it has to sit in season before I can sell it. It has to age and dry out. And I also, uh, I started working about six months ago part-time with a tree guy that does tree work. And uh, so I, uh, actually both of us, me and the guy that works for me as well, we'd go and help him. It might be one day a week, sometimes it might be three days a week. And, uh, but we don't do as much, uh, most of it, like now we've got most of the wood cut for next year. And, uh, but a lot of it we cut on site just because it's easier to load and we'll cut it wherever we're cutting the wood. We'll cut it up into 18 inch blocks and bring it home and dump it on the, there and then split it. You, you realize uh, we showed mud on the road. Yeah. I, That's I, a requirement that you can't do that. Do you have a means of uh, taking care of that? Do you well, also, you, did you make the statement that you would put a fence around this property? Yes, if it, if it needs to have a fence to keep the neighbor from, the neighbor that complains all the time is only one person that's ever complained that I know of, and I've talked to everybody over there, pretty much. And uh, but you'd be willing to put a bubble. Yes, I would put up a fence, a privacy fence. The neighbor take care of the mud. Yeah. Well, that. what I was planning on doing, I just had a new neighbor move in on the right hand side of me, and what I was planning in my driveway. I mean, my property runs about four inches from his driveway. And so I was planning on putting another driveway eventually down there just to go in the back. And then it wouldn't be any problem with that. Uh, normally it's not, there probably hadn't been any mud on the street maybe four times. Uh, because, I mean, unless it's really, really muddy. I mean, I, cause I can't even get back there when it's really muddy. So. I uh, normally back the trailer up in the driveway and load it with a, a skid steer or something, and uh, or we pitch it in there if it's stacked under the carport or something. Okay, how do you uh, saw the wood? Do you use a chainsaw? Or yes, you use chainsaw. a chainsaw. Yes. And uh, how how often are you using the chainsaws? It varies all the time. I mean, sometimes it may be once a week. Sometimes it may be two or three times a week. Uh, it just varies depending on what we got, you know, got to do. Uh, but I've got uh, one lady that lives across the street and down two houses from me. I went and talked to her last night, and she didn't even know I had a business. Uh, Jamie, I don't, don't know her last name, but she uh, said so she didn't even know about it, and she came up and drove around there just to see. And of course, everybody I've talked to said they didn't have any problems with it, except for the one guy. And I don't know his last name, his first name is Steve. He's a troublemaker. He's been that away well, ever since he's been here. Um, do you have a, a splitter machine, I splitting do. machine? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop now. Some of you may have some questions. I, I've got a question. Well, go, Mr. Lewis, you made a statement that 99.9% .9 of the time you're delivering, correct? Look at, uh, Danielle, if you would go to the picture where it, the, the yard is on the side of the house for me. Uh, so who who's making all that right there? That, that's my truck. That's what I was talking about. See the tree right on the very right-hand side? Yeah. Okay, my property runs about 15 feet 
past that to the right. Okay. Why would you drive through your yard like that and make it look like that? That's the only way I got to get in and out. Go back to the other picture that you had up front. Now go, well, that, that, you can see it coming out the front, but go, go to the one you had previous to the other one. No, the one that had the, the, the big. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. There it is. Is that the one? No, the uh, one you had that's got the circle around the back. Oh, oh the site plan or the concept plan. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, we can do that. <laughs> Right there. Would, would it be not, not be simpler to, instead of doing what you say you're doing is to go through the back part right there and that way it, it's not messing up the whole yard where it looks looks pretty bad? Wouldn't that be a little simpler to load what up? Mean, between the between right squared there, the, area and the, and the shed in the back? Yeah. I could. Yes, I could. It, it'd make more sense. To, to me personally, it would make more sense to do that way than it would be to drive around your house and tear up the yard and make it look like look as bad as it does. Well, in that neighborhood, I don't know how many people's uh, familiar with it or it ever been out there, but there's only a couple yards out there that's kept decent anyways. But that, that's not a good answer. And that's not a good answer. That's not what? That's not a good answer. Well, I'm just saying, no. That Are you going to tear your yard because other people tear their yards up? No, but, like, I mean, it's not Brentwood or something. It's Murphy's. That's, uh, that's not a good answer. Okay. All right, my, my next question, and I'm not trying to be rude to you, but that's just not a good answer to me. Um, w would it not be best to go out and own out further in the county area, rural area, and just lease an acre lot that's wooded area well, instead of doing this in the subdivision? If I was a big business and made thousands of dollars, yes. But just trying to do a little bit from home, it's not, it wouldn't be feasible. I wouldn't, I don't make that much money on it to start with. And if I had to pay a lease on it, I wouldn't. Of an acre lot? Yeah, I wouldn't make anything. I've actually looked at other houses and I've looked at other places that was for rent and stuff and in Rutherford County I mean just I mean even if you just lease land it's expensive and I would not be accomplished. Is this either. the only business that you have? Is this the only thing? Yes. Yes. This is the only thing you do? For yes. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Lewis, when we, the codes have come out there before, mm -hmm. uh, what changes have you made during that time to accommodate what they've asked you about? I haven't done anything yet. I was waiting to see what they, I have cleaned up some We're talking there. about since 2017, so that's not just a month or two ago. That's been three years. Well, back then, I, nobody had any problem with anything, and I was storing the wood under the carport and then behind the carport, and I didn't have that building there. And uh, so at first it started out as a sound thing, and then they found out that that wasn't an issue. Well, this is a subdivision, and one of the requirements for a home-based business, it, uh, it's supposed to be seen and not heard. I mean, not seen and not heard. That's because it's a residence. So what changes could you make to your operation that would make it where your neighbors don't even know it's there? It is a subdivision. There's no possible way of making it where nobody knows about it. I mean, if you're in your house, no, you're not going to know it. But, I mean, there's no way of making any business where nobody knows it. Thank you. Any other questions? 
I just want to know where are where's the cutting taking place within that square? In the very back. See that row of green? There in the very back yeah. to the left on the left side there. That's actually the backyard right there, and where she's got the pointer. That's bamboo that I planted back there because there's a big sinkhole right behind it or, or a drainage thing, and I planted it so most of the cutting is right there where that it's uh, them three trailers that's an old picture but that's where most of the cutting is done in that in that corner and and most all the wood now just about is stored behind the house okay, and uh, final question um, the neighbor in which you mentioned um, issued a complaint are they adjacent to you are they a j your neighbor that you mentioned that issued the complaint about noise? Where are they located to your property? They are, if you see the, well, it's actually in 136. So see, they're a long ways away from me to start with. It's almost 100 yards from where our work area is to where he lives. And, um, uh, the uh, people that live across the street from me, they're here, they sit, never had any problems with it. Everybody on the street that I've actually talked to said they didn't have any problems with it. The people that just moved in, I talked to them before they moved in on the right hand side of me, which is 139, they just bought that. And I talked to him before he ever moved in, and he said, no, I don't have a problem with it. Any other questions? So how many ricks of wood are you selling out of there per year? It just probably this year, probably maybe 100 if it, if it gets cool again. Uh, because I had a broke foot this year and a broke hand and so I was didn't get as much I, I'm almost out of wood as far as uh, seasoned wood goes and when did you start this business at this property it's been three years ago the first year I didn't even get a license or anything because I've never heard of having to have a license for a firewood business, and I know a dozen people in Rutherford County that's got firewood, firewood, they sell firewood, and a lot more than I sell, and they've never had one, and nobody I've ever talked to has ever had one. So do you, so you do have a business license? Yeah, it's the, what, it's a small business, I mean. Well, you, uh, you did the minor home based business yeah, form, minor. but as far as business license, business I'm, license. I'm, I'm yeah, not sure. The if minor has, home business. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the other zone. Uh, I'm asking for, do you have a business license for Rutherford County that you pay taxes for the Rutherford County business tax? No, I haven't, because I, I never had uh, made enough to uh, even report. other questions bill did you have i just don't understand why you drive across your front lawn well it's really uh the better place to come around there normally and i mean it's been unseasonably wet this year so it gets like that in the past it hadn't been like that and uh it's uh I could put a, I would, what I want to do is put a uh, gravel driveway back on the right hand side of my property about four feet from the other guy's driveway or five feet and go back there with it and then I could come right out on the road and the county, I talked to some people at the county and they said that they would come out and put a the pipe in the whatever it's called Transplant. yeah and then they would rock it but only up to so many feet into the yard and and I could do that or I could actually go between the 
carport and uh, and the house in the backyard. You said that. I just want to say I am concerned there is a drainage easement that runs along that property line that you want to place and then um, your septic lines. Do you know where those are? Because yeah. it looks like you're driving all over your yeah, septic field. Probably okay. do. Okay. I got, uh, I put, well, I put, uh, when I moved there, I had, after the house was built and everything, I, I had like 32 loads of dirt hauled in there. And because all of that was what? Well, it uh, the way it was sloped, you had to do something because it was, all the water was draining in the to the house, and so uh, they put dirt in there to. Any other uh, questions? Thank you, sir. You may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. That's either for or against. So if you'll come forward at this time and give us your name and any information you'd like to share. Close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to make a motion that we deny the request because on page, and the reason why is on page two of the handout we've got, number two, uh, it will not adversely affect other property in the area which is, is located. So, to me, it violates number two, A, B, C, and D. Of, of the requirements. Requirements. Do we have a second? Second. I'm kind of concerned. I do believe he lives in this struck uh, in this home. So A, I wouldn't necessarily say he's out of compliance with if you're because it, if I'm referring to the right page of the staff report, um, home-based business must be conducted within a residential dwelling unit, which the bona fide residence of the prim principal practitioner. B, B, C. Uh, well. Okay, yeah, it is his home site, though, and that's what that uh, that condition. If it make you happy, hey, just take A off and do B, C, and D then. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Any discussion? All the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. William Harper. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. Motion is, the request is denied. The next item we have is a request by Curtis Williamson, who is requesting a special exemption approval for an establishment of open covered uh, automotive parking, which includes boats upon the property. And this is, I understand, a CG commercial general uh, zoning. What do you have on that, please? Um, thank you. Application BZA 2022 um, involves property located at Manchester Highway and East Gum Road. Uh, Mr. Williamson is seeking special exception approval for the establishment of open and covered automotive parking to include the storage of recreational vehicles and boats upon a property in the CG zoning district. In October of 2019, the property uh, received approval for a zoning amendment uh, changing the zoning designation from residential medium to commercial general. Uh, during that process of getting the property rezoned, Mr. Williams, Williamson or the applicant declared that it was his intention to establish this type of use, the auto storage and RV storage on this property to complement the use across the street, which is a mini storage facility that's located at 7650 East Gum Road. Um, the applicant has submitted a concept plan which has been included in your packets. Uh, they will, if you approve the use, will be required to go through the site plan uh, process and the planning commission will uh, see the, the site plan before he can establish or commence work on the site. Um, the applicant indicates that the property will be gated and access will be available to customers 24 hours a day. Um, they will post a sign on the property. I will indicate that during uh, the discussions by the Board of Commissioners and Planning Commission, they uh, were concerned about um, 
the frontage along Manchester Pike and its appearance. And so should the Board of Zoning Appeals desire, they could uh, require a type two buffer along this Manchester Highway um, frontage uh, to uh, screen the proposed use from that uh, thoroughfare. Uh, the applicant will be required to provide a type two buffer um, along the property lines that abut residential medium zones. Uh, apart from that, we find that the request meets the criteria for special exception approval. And these are photos of the site. Um, and then we posted, or the sign was posted at the corner of the property and we send out notices to people within 500 feet. This is the concept plan and it's subject to change based on any kind of a, uh, conditions you place as well as uh, going through the, the technical review process. This is very basic as you see. That concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? Who will come around please? Chairman Ken Farrell, Commissioners, my name is Clyde Roundtree with Huddleston Steel Engineering. I'm here representing Mr. Williamson on this particular project. And as Daniel said, it is for storage. He operates the gum, um, the gum highway mini storage. That's basically Caddy Corner, about two lots down gum highway. He currently has a lot of uh, vehicles that are stored on that property, so they're kind of taking up space over there. Uh, his, his master plan approved another, like another slate of units as far as actual mini storage units. So he would like to expand his operation to allow for uh, vehicle storage, RVs, boats, and cars. The back portion on the rear of the property is actually a covered structure, so there'd be more of a carport element to it as well. Um, and so with that in mind, it's primarily a gravel lot that will, whether it's striped or not, that'll be contingent, but it's basically for vehicle storage on the surface level. He has currently on his property a, a decorative fence with, with brick columns and a wrought iron kind of fence. He would like to keep that same kind of pattern and theme on this property. So it's going to look nice. As far as the Type 2 buffer on Manchester, um, I'd, I'd like to ask if we could approve that we could do something that would be a little less, you know, a little bit more open but more decorative in nature. Maybe have the wrought iron fence with some some shade trees and maybe some shrubbery that would basically take out maybe the majority of the vehicles, but somehow make it look where it's not like a green wall. Primarily, it probably looks, one of the critiques that the uh, Planning Commission had was wanting to keep kind of a rural character along Manchester Highway, you know, to make it look as rural as possible and to have a type two buffer right there might look a little, little strange. So that's just something we would do. He knows we're gonna have to do some landscaping. It's just a matter of how aesthetically it would be the most Pleasant from Manchester Pike. That's really the extent of it. It, it has a you know, like a, a fob storage, you know, or a little kiosk there, gate kiosk. It'll be interfacing. So most of the clients that will be using this facility are people he's working with over at the mini storage across the street. So it's kind of a companion business. So a lot of the you know any kind of questions concerning this lot will probably be directed over towards the mini storage folks. Um, and that's really the extent of it. He, he's sensitive to the fact that both Gum Highway and Manchester are. That's fine. Our public right of ways and obviously Manchester Pike, as we mentioned, has kind of that rural character. So whatever we can do from a landscape standpoint to make it look consistent would be great. But we're willing to do what we need to do from a buffer standpoint. What all are the uh, items that you will be parking there? Automobiles? Yeah, there'll be, it's probably gonna be primarily RV storage trailers, boats, and, and cars. Is we, this like someone owns it and needs a place to park it? Yes, That's sir. It. Yeah, it's not a rental kind of facility or something. Not has a, sales, it's... It's just purely storage. And is that, Curtis, is that correct? Yes, sir. And how much of it will be covered? Right now, just the back portion. If there's more of a demand for covered storage, he finds that need out there, he'd probably expand the covered area potentially. But right now, based on the market that he's kind of serving, that back portion will probably handle the folks with the RVs that are looking for, you know, sun protection and that kind of thing. And you all already have plans for a buffer around? The it's going to be required, as Daniel mentioned, in the site planning process. The Type 2 runs along the back portions. It's really how we treated Manchester Pike that's the biggest concern from an aesthetic standpoint. 
and we, and that would be really working with the planning staff to go what you know what's the most appropriate because the type two buffer is pretty substantial as far as a financial commitment so i think if we could match those funds to do something with more of a street trees and decorative shrubs and the fence because he's already committed to the decorative fence he, he really likes that look and, and likes the character that presents any other questions Thank you, sir. You may be Thank seated. You. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. I have a motion on it. I make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the Planning Commission's recommendation that a Type 2 buffer be put along 41 Highway. They can work out what that means in their site plan. Second. We have a second. We need a second. No, oh, second. I didn't. Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you. Sir. I didn't hear it either. I didn't. didn't no. <laughs> Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second to be approved. Do we have any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Amber Brown? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. William Harper? Yes. Renee Curtis? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. And just to point out to everybody, I, I think I did this already. Uh, it is a CG commercial general zoning already. It's already commercial to a certain extent. Uh, do we have any other business to come before us? No, sir. Okay. Thank you for all of you for being here. Thank you, board members, and you are adjourned till next month. <laughs>